Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we're going to finish painting the rest of the bits of the Alfa Ferrari. All right guys, welcome back. And those of you who've been following this will know that this is the Alfa Ferrari. This is my Ferrari 360 engine powered Alfa 105, which I've been working on for the last two and a half years. And last week I finally got it in paint and it looks so good. <laughs> I'm so happy. There were a few runs and there was an issue where I actually, uh, my painting coat touched the wet paint and, uh, and made a bit of a mess, but that's not a big deal. That's all fixable. Uh, overall, I got lots of paint on the car. The car is overall really, really straight. There's a few spots of runs. There's some sort of runs over the other end and there's a couple of little tiny ones around the place. Nothing to be concerned about. The main issue really is that I don't have sufficient lighting in the boot. So that, I think that's something I'm gonna rectify before I do the, uh, the, the stripes and the other bits, but we can move forward today anyway on the other bits and pieces, which is the bonnet, the boot, and the flares, uh, are the things that I really want to get painted. So, um, yeah, overall, the reaction seems to be quite good on the car. There are lots of suggestions. The great suggestion with the fixing the runs is, particularly before they get big, is wipe them while they're still wet. Even though you're gonna smear it, it's gonna be easier to cut them out than if they're a big run. Like, particularly the big drips, if you can wipe them away while they're wet, uh, it makes the job much easier later. You're still not going to have a perfect paint job, but you, you're past that point anyway. So uh, um, very happy. I said the panels are very straight. Um, I prefer to get runs and get a few runs than have it really, really dry, because really dry makes it uh, so much orange peel, it's really hard to get out. There's a little bit of orange peel in here. This will chop out really easy. Like it's, it's not going to be a problem at all. It's when it's really dry, it's beyond orange peel. It's more like sandpaper. And that's, that's what you don't want. So, um, all right, time to leave this thing alone. We don't want to uh, touch it yet. We just want to, it's only been a few days since I painted it. Um, I'm going to give it another uh, week or so, and then we're going to go back and start looking at other things. But uh, for now, let's get on to those other panels. So just going around and doing the final touch-ups on the edges of the doors. And a final going over in 400 grit. Same now with the bonnet doing in, in 180 first and then 400. And now just spending a bit of time tidying up the window in the bonnet and making sure the shape is perfect. Guide coat and 400 grit on the inside as well. Well, I have glossed over a whole day's work or more of going around and fine tuning the bonnet, the boot, the doors, and now these wheel arch flares. Um, sanded them all back, went through, fixed a bunch of pinholes with some spot putty and sanded it back again. I've just uh, hit some etch primer on it just to tidy them up make sure it's all sealed in. Uh, it will show up anything else and just help smooth it out just a little bit. But the big thing that I've done is I've improved the spray booth and hopefully done something that will stop the runs. So I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this on camera or not, but this morning I went through and I've actually added four new 40 watt uh, LED batten lights into the booth in the top corners around the edge of the booth and Look at the difference. Now, I'm not sure if that makes much difference to you guys behind the camera, but I am telling you here, it is night and day difference, literally. Uh, I can see everything so much now. This actually, I'm noticing now the bonnet's hanging up. Maybe a little bit less here, but once the door is closed, there'll be a bit more reflection coming off of the white walls. And uh, 
it is a game changer when it comes to spraying. The big reason why I got runs in the body of the Alfa Ferrari is because I couldn't see how thick the paint was going on. You really need to be able to see to gauge that level of shine and whether it's dry or not. And it's, it's a thing. And oh, I should have done this ages ago, but I did look 12 months or so ago and there weren't a lot of lights available and they were relatively expensive. And I just looked again yesterday and the price has come down astronomically. They're much more affordable. And, uh, oh, I should have done this ages ago. I may even add a couple more. It could even do with uh, a couple either end, which I think would, would sort of tie the whole lot together. But uh, for now, wow. So uh, let's start cleaning the booth up and uh, getting ready to spray some bits. Another one of many rounds of wax and grease remover. And now I'm using some welding wire screwed into the ceiling to hang the flares so I can get as much in the booth as possible. Wetting the floor to try and keep the dust down as much as I possibly can and then mix up some paint. Alright, well, uh, I've glossed over everything a lot in this episode because a lot of it's repetitive. You've seen it in the last few episodes on the paint. I've gone through, I've prepped everything up. I did hang the doors and hang the bonnet and the boot as opposed to laying them flat. The main reason for that is laying them flat, you can get the paint to sit like glass. You get a better finish laying them flat, but then it's going to take twice as long because I'm going to have to paint one surface wait for it to dry for a week or so and then mask it up and then do the other side whereas hanging them I can do them together and I'm going to be flow coating the car anyway so I can refine that finish when I do that and I'll talk about that more in the future but everything's ready now the floor is wet I've gone through and I've tack ragged the whole lot I've cleaned it two or three times they're all ready to go so now it's just a matter of heading in there with some of the ground coat first ground coat, then the uh, actual Ferrari yellow fly, and then the uh, final clear coat. So let's start painting. All right, so we have all these panels all finished and it all came out really nice. There are no runs. Some of the stuff is a little bit drier than I would potentially like. There is a little bit of dust on this end of uh, this door, which may have something to do with the extraction filter being just here. It's only just here. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I mean, that would chop out quite easily. I'm not concerned about it at all. This was the biggest mess up is again, I ran my back into this flare. Um, I also got a little bit of extra uh, build up on, on just, just in here on the color. So that flare needs to be repainted, but I'm not too concerned. The other three came up fantastic. They all look really nice. There is a bug that was on this one um, that will take a little bit of tidying up, but nothing too crazy. There was also on the back of the boot, there was a mosquito that went in here and I wiped most of it off and I should be able to just buff the rest of that out. There's, it's very, very faint. You I don't even know if the camera's picking that up, but uh, it's there. Okay, so these panels, the bonnet, the boot and the doors, because they're hanging up from these bolts from the back, it means that they are leaning forward slightly. So the, the back of them is all fantastic, nice and glossy. I can see it very well. Uh, these parts I actually put my LED light down on the ground so I could see the reflection as I was painting them. And that it did help quite a bit, but they're still a little bit drier, mostly also because of gravity. It's, it's harder to paint sort of the underside of things than it is like when they're laying flat, like I mentioned before. But that's not a big issue because these are all getting standard back. Uh, I've got stripes to add to some of these things and they're getting flow coated anyway. So it's really not an issue. There are no runs. 
I am very happy. Overall, this stuff looks great, and uh, oh, the lighting makes such a big difference. So um, anyway, I think that's it for this week. So I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1973 at the Paris Motor Show, a new Dino was introduced, the 308 GT4. This was a groundbreaking model for Ferrari, as it was its first mid-engine V8, which would become the bulk of Ferrari's business in the succeeding decades. Pininfarina was upset that its rival Bertone designed the bodywork, which was compared to the Lancia Stratos and the Lamborghini Uraco, which were also designed by Marcello Gandini. The car was based on a stretched 246 Dino space frame to fit the 2 plus 2 layout with a transversely mounted 3 litre V8 which was integrally joined to the 5 speed transaxle. Dino was Ferrari's entry level brand at the time and the cars were not actually badged Ferrari. It wasn't until May 1976 the struggling sales that Ferrari realised that customers were reluctant to spend that kind of money on a car without the prancing horse, so the Dinos were finally badged Ferrari. In 1975, a two-litre version was built for the Italian market with the 208 GT4 to fit Italian regulations. This deboard version of the V8 remains today as the smallest production V8 ever produced by any manufacturer. We are getting there. It's getting, it's getting so much better. And all the parts, or the main parts, are painted. I know there's hinges and little bits and pieces that I'm going to need to paint, and uh, but it's, it's really coming together. It's really feeling like a, uh, uh, a cohesive thing now. And the lights in the booth make such a difference. We've had this conversation before about how it's much better just to buy the right thing, but once. Yes. And yeah, but we live and learn. I've been struggling with lights in the all booth for a long time and yeah. now it just feels so much better. Yeah. It's going to make all of the painting so much easier and so much just, yeah, better all around. Right tools for the job. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> all, right. all right. Like and subscribe and if you want to help Jeff out on this channel with um, money for tools and things like lighting, follow him on Patreon and you see the videos. It feels really old fashioned saying videos. What do we say nowadays? Do we say films, there's videos? Still, there's still videos. Videos for all you old schools out there. Um, a day early with no ads. It's always nice. Yes. So do you hear more Jeff? Less ads. Or well, same <laughs> amount of Jeff, but less ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. Which would become the bulk of the company's <laughs> business. <laughs> Mid-engine V8, which would become the bulk of the company's success business in this which was compared to the Lancia Stratos Thank you. with a transversely mounted thing with two plus twos <laughs> three litre v8 that's the thing it wasn't until may 1976 that ferrari realized this there 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 <laughs> yes yeah, nailed it <laughs> <laughs>